thematic mineralogy, from time to time, there's going to need to be big interruptions. And today is one of them. What we're going to do from time to time is talk about a general geologic occurrence. So instead of talking about a specific mineral today, we're going to take like a little break, uh, a breaking news kind of lecture, and we're just going to talk about evaporites. Because evaporites are a family of minerals that include 80 different species. And if we talk about the geologic process associated with evaporation to form evaporite minerals, then we won't need to talk about it in as much detail as we go into all these different individual um, minerals throughout the rest of the semester. So we're going to say that the evaporite process actually ends up making about 80 different minerals. And of those 80, some of them are really important, like halite and... Uh, oh, why did I start making really bad penmanship? Little kid penmanship. Halite, uh, gypsum, gypsum's cousin, anhydrite. Uh, what other ones? Calcite and dolomite. We could list a bunch more, but those are all minerals that we're going to talk about in detail later this semester. And they all form by the same geologic process. And our process for evaporite minerals, we're going to just do like a little one, two, three here, is we need to evaporate a restricted body of water. That's the main thing that's going on here. So we are going to say a restricted, restricted body of water body of water evaporates. And this body of water can either be marine, okay, that means ocean, or non-marine, think lake or puddle, although puddles would be much too small to make it into the rock record. So marine or non-marine water evaporates. And as that water evaporates, dissolved ions become more and more enriched. So I suppose we should be thinking about this pictorially while we go through the list. So here is our little basin, and our basin has water in it that is evaporating, leaving behind mineral deposits, which you see in white. We can also be thinking about it with like little sketches. So here is our basin that is filled with water and it is restricted. And so it's starting to evaporate. And so at a later time, we have the same topography, but it is much less water. And so we get the deposition of a mineral phase at the base. And it's going to end up making a sedimentary rock layer. A chemical sedimentary rock would be the type of classification. Okay, so that's kind of the process that we're going through here. So number two is dissolved ions become enriched and may supersaturate. become progressively enriched in water and may supersaturate. So the, what are the ions I'm talking about? This is sodium, chlorine, calcium, all right? These are our building blocks to those minerals we listed above. And then finally, what will happen is that minerals will precipitate as sedimentary layers. as sedimentary. Now the thickness of the sedimentary layers that get deposited is going to be controlled by how salty, right, or how full of ions the water was. So we know ocean water is really salty. And so like for an example here, if you have an ocean that's 300 meters deep, because we know how many ions and how salty that water is, if it were to evaporate in full, you would create a layer that's 15 meters thick. All right, that's actually a pretty significant amount of evaporites that would get deposited. Now, it's not just pure salt. There's actually a lot of different um, evaporites that can form, and they form with a sequence. And there's a lot of nuances to the sequence. I'm not going to teach you the nuances, okay? I'm just going to teach you kind of the basic sequence that we'd expect to find in places, and it's all about how much water is left. So if we have 50% of the water is gone and 50% of the water is left 
in your basin, the mineral that you're going to precipitate out is calcite. Okay, so we could consider this like, this is like the first mineral. If we were to like rank them, as to what's going to come first, second, and third. Well, the first thing to form would be calcite with 50% left. When you have lost 80% of your water and only 20% of it is left behind, that's when you're going to get minerals like gypsum and anhydrite forming. Anhydrite. And the thing you probably would have guessed first and been terribly wrong is when you've lost 90% of your water and you only have 10% of it left, that's when you're going to get your salt, your halite deposits forming. So what's interesting about this sequence is it's a way to read the ancient rock record, to look into the past and see episodes of drought and climate and how that's fluctuated through time. Now, to finish off this little mini lecture introduction, I just want to give you two examples of geographies, places where this has occurred or is occurring. And Death Valley in California is a famous one here in the States. Here's an astronaut space shuttle view of Death Valley, where we see two mountain ranges uh, separated by this basin. And this basin ends up being, let's, let's, let's use some of our technical, oh, cancel, da, da, da. Let's use, so it's a non-marine, okay, because it's just water that's falling by precipitation, and it's filling this basin that formed as a robin. Do you know that word? That's a pull-apart, normal, fault-bounded uh, sag structure that formed from basin and range tectonics. Look that up if you want to. It's an interesting story. That's why Death Valley is around 100 meters below sea level. Um, so let's see. We have a situation now that is very hot. So Death Valley is known for being very hot, right? And that scorching hot temperatures could be one of the reasons for it being called death. But the other is because the water that you can find in here, well, it's actually like called Badwater Lake. Bad water is what is present in Death Valley. It was named by the 49ers who were going from the East Coast to San Francisco. And as they crossed this, many people ended up dying in that like year or two, 1849, 1850, because of the temperatures and because of all the water. So that's how it earned its name. But it wasn't always this dry, desiccated desert in the Pleistocene, right? That was the era before ours. During the Pleistocene and during the Ice Ages, during the Pleistocene, this was actually a big lake that filled this entire basin. And in the last 10,000 years or so, that has evaporated out because climate's much drier here and evaporation outpaces precipitation, right? That's how a desert works. And so the water has all evaporated, leaving behind um, thick deposits of salt. And so if you were to take a picture or go visit Death Valley and take a look, this here's a, here's a shot um, looking up. I think it's from here, looking up towards these mountains. You can just see what the floor of Death Valley looks like. And this is an evaporite deposit. If you were to dig down, you'd see layers of gypsum and halite and um, until you get finally to like the actual lake sediments that were there before. And then the last example is an even grander scale. It's a hard word to spell. Cancel. Da, da, da. Here we go. Example. I want to spell the word Mediterranean. It catches me all the time. Here we go. The Mediterranean Sea. The Mediterranean Sea is incredible because it has kilometers, two to three kilometers thick worth of evaporites on its floor. Now, it is a marine basin, but it's a weird marine basin, right? That means it's ocean. It's a marine, it's a weird marine basin. Let me show you a map of it before we put anything down. There's only one inlet and one outlet, and it's right here through the Strait of Gibraltar. And it's water that flows through the Strait of Gibraltar that keeps this full. Because the climate of the Mediterranean, let's just say this, it is a desert climate. And so there's no way there's enough rainfall to keep this whole sea open. And so we get flow through Strait of Gibraltar. Gibraltar to 
maintain sea level. Well, in the 1950s, uh, it's like oil exploration types, were using seismics to understand the floor here, looking for oil, and they found two to three kilometers thick um, gypsum and halite uh, evaporate deposits. And what is now known is that these two to three kilometer thick evaporites were probably caused by evaporation of the entire Mediterranean Sea. So two to three kilometer evaporites formed by evaporation of the entire sea. That's an incredible thing to try to visualize. That would be a hole in the ground, four kilometers deep, right? And maybe it filled up and, and evaporated out a couple times. The timing of this, uh, it ends up being between five and six million years ago. So it was a long time ago, but not too far into the distant past. And the main idea about how it happened is that if global sea level out here dropped, then the Strait of Gibraltar all of a sudden now becomes the dam of Gibraltar, and there's no water that can flow in creating this to be a restricted basin, allowing it all to evaporate. Well, that's a pretty wild story and one told by the rocks. Anyways, that is our introduction to evaporites.